if you don't change your behaviors, you're never going to get the kind of currency that you want mentally, emotionally, and socially. And some people hide from their personal truth by being a workaholic. I was doing a life skills seminar one time, and I had a woman come up to me afterwards, and she said, you know, I was listening to everything you said, but I just, I just don't have time for it. I mean, I, I said, really? Where do you live? She said, in a white suburban. I said, what do you mean? She said, I live in a white suburban. I have four children, and they go to four different schools. One of them plays soccer, one of them plays basketball, one of them is in band, and one of them doesn't do anything. So she said, I get up in the morning, I go to four different schools, I drop them off, I pick them up, I take them to these activities and those activities, and I'm a realtor. So I'm racing around, showing homes, going here, going there, going here, going here, going there. And she said, I'm just, I'm just, I'm just, I'm just burning out. She said, I just feel like I'm just going to explode any second. And I said, well, do something for me. I said, after you drop those kids off to school tomorrow, I want you to go home, turn your phone off, take the phone off the hook, lock the doors, go run a bath, even a bubble bath, get the stupidest magazines you can find, and just go spend 30 minutes relaxing in a bubble bath. She looked at me like I was insane. She said, are you kidding me? She said, oh, my God, my mother would turn over in her grave. I said, oh, my God, now we're living for dead people? Are you kidding me? Your mother would turn over in her grave? I said, I'll tell you what, do it every day of the week. Let's, tr- let's, let's spin her like a rotisserie chicken. I don't care if she turns over in her grave. Let's just spin her around. I don't, what, what do you care if she's dead? Give it a shot. Come on. You've got to change something. You've got to change your thinking. You've got to change your behavior. You're making choices that have consequences. I had the opportunity to interview a senator one time. I'm not going to say his name. I'm really not this time. He was one of the oldest people in Congress. And I asked him, I said, Senator, you've met heads of state, president, Supreme Court justices. Tell me, everything you've done, everything you've seen, what's the most exciting thing to ever happen to you? And he thought for a minute, he looked at me, and he said, well, Sonny boy, I hope it hadn't happened yet. And I thought, wow, what a profound answer. Here's a guy that's been in Congress since Christ was a child, 50, 60 years. And he said, I hope it hasn't happened yet. How about you? How about you? I mean, if you're 40 years old, you've lived 14,000 some odd days, and life expectancy now is pushing into the 90s. Are you one of those people that if I say, what do you do for fun? And you say, well, you know, well, we used to fish. You know, we used to, we used to take a couple weeks and travel. When was the last time you did that? Oh, it's been, what, has mama been six years, seven years? Really? Last time you had fun was six or seven years ago? Well, you got 40 years left. And the last time you really gave yourself permission to have fun was six or seven years ago, and you got 40 years left? That's a long, long time to do what you're doing. That's a long time to be boring. I mean, come on. This is no dress rehearsal. You're burning daylight, man. You got to figure out. I got to redefine my life. I got to redefine this. And I'm going to end this conversation with one question I want you to ask yourself and just let this weigh on you a little bit. Just how much fun are you to live with? Ask yourself that. Don't ask yourself, I'm not asking you to change everything at one time. Just ask yourself this. How much fun 
are you to live with? The formula for a successful relationship is this. Number one, it's based on a solid underlying friendship, which means, first, what do friends do? They share things. They support each other. They laugh. They talk. They're friends. They invest. It's based on a solid underlying friendship, and it meets the needs of the two people involved. Now, think about that. It meets the needs of the two people involved. That means you've got two jobs. Job number one is to work to discover the needs of your partner. Job number two is work to teach your partner your needs. Now, if both of you are doing those two jobs, if you're working to teach your partner your needs and you're working to learn your partner's needs, then you're both teaching and learning at the same time. If he or she is both teaching and learning at the same time, then you've got two people moving towards each other. You're each trying to learn the other's needs and teach the other person your needs. All of a sudden, you're moving towards each other with the common goal of creating intimacy. That might require turning the television off. And in case you didn't know, if you have a television in your bedroom, your sex life suffers 50%, 55-0%. So if you want to get lucky, kick Kimmel and Fallon and Conan and Corden to the curb. Get them out of your bedroom, but ask yourself, how much fun are you to live with? When I talk about how much fun you are to live with, I don't mean just for your spouse or your kids. I mean you. I've always said if I was going to be alone, I don't want to be a bad person to do it with. So that means I got to get along with me pretty well. And here's the deal. You've probably noticed throughout this whole time that I've been talking to you that there's a common theme to what I've been saying, and that is I'm being selfish on your behalf. And you may think, boy, if I do everything he's been talking about, I'm going to feel selfish. Well, don't. Don't feel selfish when you're putting yourself first. Do not feel selfish when you're putting yourself first. Here's why. You can't give away what you don't have. If you love your children, and I know you do, then take care of their mother. Take care of their father. The last thing you want to do is mismanage yourself such that you wind up emotionally bankrupt and become emotionally unavailable or physically unavailable because you have a heart attack and die so the people that you love and love you don't have you in their lives. You don't want to do that. you got to take care of yourself because you can't give away what you don't have. So is it selfish? For you to take some time to yourself? No, not if it prolongs your life, not if it keeps you vibrant and alive so you can be there for the people that you love and love you. I don't want you to be emotionally bankrupt. If you allow yourself to get depressed and anxious and gray and burned out, then so your kids get old enough to get married and they come to you for advice. You say, I got nothing. I got nothing for you. I burned myself out because I wasn't smart enough to take a break and take care of myself. I'm sorry, I can't help you pick a wife or a husband. I can't give you advice about how to be a father or a mother because I'm, I'm burned out or I died 10 years ago and I've been absent in your life all of that time. Don't do that. You do not want to allow yourself to become emotionally bankrupt. And to do that, you got to treat yourself like a bank account. If all you ever do are make withdrawals, you never make any deposits, you are going to wind up with a zero balance. We need mothers, not martyrs. We need fathers, not martyrs. You've got to take care of yourself. And that means you've got to make some deposits. You've got to do some things for yourself. And that's what I've been talking about along the way here. And if you are a mother or a father and you've got kids that are five, six, seven, eight, ten years old, take a real close look and you're going to notice something. 
they have arms and legs. They can pick up their own room. They can pick up their own toys. They can even make a peanut butter and jelly sandwich. And nobody will call Child Protective Services if they have to make themselves a sandwich. You don't have to do everything. And here's an interesting word to put in your vocabulary. No. No, I won't take you here. No, I won't take you there. No, I won't do this. No, I won't do that. We are living in a society with entitled children. They need to hear no. Turn off the television. Go outside. Rake some leaves. Get out in the sun. Breathe some fresh air. Leave them alone. You want some time alone with your spouse? Robin and I used to tell our kids, look, this door is closed. Unless one of you burst into flames, do not open this door. You have to have some time for yourself. So the theme that you've been hearing here is you've got to take care of yourself, and it's not selfish because you do not want to be emotionally bankrupt. Take care of you. You deserve it. The people you love deserve it.